In the second part of the spherical pressure vessel with cylindrical nozzle finite element analysis, we'll start with the 2D axisymmetric model we created in the first part, and we'll create a 3D solid model of this vessel by revolving the cross section around the y axis. When we open the project uh, schematic, we can first of all check the geometry for design modeler and change the properties for the analysis type from 2D to 3D. And then we can go to design modeler and this was the cross section that was originally created in the first part and we can remove the surface that we have created in order to create the revolve we'll need to select the sketch and click on revolve and select apply we'll need to also select the y-axis and apply we can have the add material option or the frozen option add material is fine for this case and we'll need to select how many degrees that this has to be rotated. In this case, it's going to be 90. And we'll simply create generate. So this creates our 3D uh, solid model. And we can now transfer this solid into uh, mechanical and apply our boundary conditions and solve. In the project schematic, we'll need to go to model and make sure we reset this and it will create a, a fresh mechanical model and not take over uh, any of the 2D uh, conditions that we have created earlier. We can then start the mechanical application by clicking edit and it will attach the geometry into the mechanical model we can see that under geometry there is one solid and the mesh isn't yet defined of course but we can simply click update and then see what workbench gives us by default as you can see it's a fairly coarse tetrahedron type mesh which isn't as good so we can add a few mesh controls for this type of geometry, uh, a sweep mesh is possible. And we can try this under mesh controls and method. We first need to select the geometry. And from automatic method, we can change to the sweep method. It will be useful sometimes to specify the source and target faces. So rather than leaving automatic, which sometimes fails, we can manually select the source and target faces. So this face, for example, can be a source and this face will be the target. So we can sweep the mesh from this face to the other face. And we can change the measure type from quad triangular to all quad. And we can also specify number of divisions along the sweep path. So we can change that to say 10 divisions, let's say, and that will create 10 divisions along the length of the sweep path. Therefore, this is 90 degrees, uh, nine degree segments will be created. So we can go with this and see what happens. So the mesher has created a fairly coarse mesh and we can add a couple of size controls. We can add uh, line sizes or line divisions and also create a graded mesh so that we try to concentrate the elements in the stress concentration point. One option is either globally trying to do this um, so we'll create a global sizing first of all and element size by default is going to be 
0 0.055 five millimeters. So that should create around four elements through the thickness. So if you go back to mesh, it has become obsolete and we need to update. So that should give us a fairly um, refined mesh now. So it has created um, all hex uh, mesh for us and they are all sized uh, relatively square and that's a good mesh but we can also choose to add more elements in the corner here at the intersection in order to capture the stress concentration in even finer detail but we can go with this mesh and then create a solution and see what stresses we get so to get the boundary conditions we go to static structural and apply our supports the supports we are going to create are simply frictionless faces so that these faces are free to expand on their uh, planes so create these frictionless faces and we also need to apply some um, boundary conditions in the y-axis so it's not going to move one option might be to fix this face in the previous case in the 2d axis metric model we created a pressure load on this face but in this case let's say we try fixing this face as frictionless so create support frictionless and also apply a pressure so the pressure will be applied to the internal faces of the vessel and the value is going to be 1e6 that's 1 megapascals so the model is ready to be sold we can add a couple of solution items like total deformation, stress, equivalent stress, and principal stresses, and any other values that we are interested. So we can solve the model now. So if we look at the total deformation, it's very similar to the previous case. But if you notice, that since we have fixed the top face now uh, everything is expanding downwards and outwards if you look at the equivalent stresses for the stress concentration at the intersection we are getting the same value as we have in the 2d axis metric model so it's about 10.6 megapascals And we can look at the other principal stresses and the minimum principal stress for example will represent the pressure surface so it's going to be about um, one or minus one on the inside face and should approach zero on the outside face there is one way to visualize the true thickness variation of these stresses and that's by creating a path plot in workbench it is possible to do this using a construction line defined as a, a path and do some linearized stresses on that so if you are interested in for example how stresses vary along um, a regularly stressed part of the sphere we can go to model and apply construction geometry a path and the path can be based on XYZ coordinates of two points we can select the point and apply and select another point and apply so that's created uh, path from inside surface to the outside surface and that has created the path for us and we can go to 
solution and now it allows us to do linearized stresses and on that we can apply any of the quantities that we are interested in for example the equivalent stress if we um, select the path that we have just created and solve it shows us how the equivalent stress varies through thickness it's doing this using some linearization algorithms so it's also calculating for us the membrane stress the bending stress and membrane plus bending stress plus the peak and also gives us a total one so we can see how the stress varies from the inside to the outside another thing we can do with this model is if we look at the frictionless support that we have created and that was at the top of the vessel at this face in the previous axis metric model we created a pressure surface there and that was applying a force uh, extending this nozzle in the positive y-axis so we can try to find out what reaction force we get on this frictionless support we can click on frictionless support drop it into the solution so that creates a force reaction for that point and if we click on solve what we find is that the force on that face is 706 newtons so that's exactly the same pressure we have used in the 2D axis metric um, model. So that concludes the solid modeling for this vessel. We'll continue with the shell modeling of this and compare our results with this.